This is Local Edition. Brad Pomerantz here in Sacramento, our Capitol Bureau. We are joined by Connie Leva, member of the California State Senate. And you did pretty well last year. How many bills passed? Uh, eight out of ten. Signed? Signed. Nice, nice. Yes. You have some more bills coming down the pike. I want to talk about one of them. It deals with Cal Grants and specifically Cal Grant C. Yes. Explain Cal Grant C. So Cal Grant C, um, this, what this would do, this is money that students can use for food, for housing, all the things that are kind of associated with going to school, right. books, whatnot. Right now it's $547, mm -hmm. which really isn't enough right. to do much. This bill would make it $3,000. And it's interesting, the way it will work that magic is, I guess if a student is receiving a waiver, mm -hmm. uh, which many students do yes. through the California Community College Foundation, whatever it may be, they aren't eligible for the maximum That's grant right. under Cal Grant C. That's exactly now right. Now you're allowing that. And I'm glad you brought that up because I'm sure you know <clears throat> there are many districts, Los Angeles, Long Beach, uh, San Diego, community college districts that are creating what's called college promises. Yes. These first yes. years free. Mm -hmm. Problem is, there's no money for books, That's food. Right. That's exactly Talk right. Talk us through that. So it, talking to millennials right. and asking them what's important to you, what can we do to help you, all of them talk about college debt, all of them talk to, about access to college, and they talk about getting the tuition, exactly as you said, mm -hmm. Brad, but then they said there's no money for anything else. Because as we know, when you're in school, you can maybe not even work. If you can, it's only part-time. So where do you live? How do you pay for gas? How are a bus pass? How do you feed yourself so that you can go to school and come out and be a productive citizen in our communities. In the past, the governor has wanted items that cost something yes. to be part of the budget bill, yes. as opposed to standalone bills. Yes. Some folks had bills veto they never expected because they weren't part of the budget. Yes. Does this bill need to be part of the budget? Well, we're going to do a standalone bill and see what happens. Okay, but could it be? I mean, Certainly. help me through it. So, so you know, we the the emphasis is we want the money, right? right. We want to help these. We don't students. care how we get it. We, it yeah. pr that's right. pretty accurate. Right. So we have a bill. We introduce the bill. If the governor thinks that we would be we would be better to put it in the budget, right. I don't have a problem with that. But when you introduce a bill, I think sometimes you get more attention than when you just put it in the budget. Most us in Sacramento know about the budget and uh, right. how we get things done. Done, but your average person doesn't. This is a way for people to coalesce around this issue and say, hey, Mr. Governor, this is really important. This Cal Grant program, the C program, focuses on career technical education. Yes. And I want to dig deep into that because we have a new federal administration. And one can say a lot of things about the new administration. Mm -hmm. But one thing we can say is that the new president is looking to bring jobs back to America, whatever that may mean. Right. And those jobs, presumably manufacturing jobs, skilled jobs, semi-skilled jobs, well, these new workers are going to need to be trained in career tech. Yes. yes. So I'm wondering if you, Senator Leva, can leverage what appears to be an emphasis in D.C. to the benefit of Californians. Well, I will certainly try that, uh, but we will see. The proof is in the pudding. Right. Uh, when the president-elect tweets uh. out that he's so happy that Walmart is leading the push for more jobs in America, that's not the direction I'm looking at us to go. Uh, we have a wonderful facility in Fontana, California, in right. tech, who goes out, talks to companies, and says, what do you need? And then, in turn, they train those young people or not so young people and give them the skill set that they need to go and get those good paying jobs. Okay. So I think that's a great place to start. We will see what the president elect right. really does. I if, just want us to be ready because I feel I as agree. if if all of a sudden jobs start coming back, whatever right. that may mean for Mexico, China, whatever right. it is. Are we ready? Are we are we I ready agree. in California? Are we? I, I think we're getting there. I mm -hmm. think the emphasis in the last few years on career tech has made us really think about that. Uh -huh. Certainly in the Inland Empire, we have a lot of warehouses. We have a lot of logistics um, jobs. And those aren't necessarily good paying jobs, but they're jobs that can transition over to manufacturing jobs. And that's the key because while some of them may not be 
permanent, without benefits, whatever it may mean, some of them are skilled. Yes, yes. And many of the logistics jobs are. And so we need to be ready. Yes, and uh, I think places like Intech are helping to make that happen. Uh, and if, if we see more of these facilities coming up, nonprofits like them doing this, we will be ready and we can be ready. And we just have to stay on top of it. I, I want to speak about K-12, if we yes. can. I'm trying to remember the exact term of the cliche, but it's something about an idle mind is the devil's play. <laughs> yes, you know what I'm talking about? I do. And when you see tweens and teens idle after school, mm -hmm. it's a recipe for trouble. Absolutely. And all they need is something to do. Yes. You want to make sure that there is something for them to do. Yes. After school programs are of critical importance for our young people, for our communities, for society. As you say, if young people don't have some place to go or something to do, they're going to find something to do, but it's right. probably not going to be what we want them exactly. to be doing. And after school programs also help with tutoring. They help students who need a little extra help that maybe the, the, our, we ask so much of our teachers. But what's confusing to me mm -hmm. is I recall that back in 2002, the voters passed Prop 49, right. which provided after school funding. So it, what's the problem? The Help problem me. <laughs> is uh, everything has gone up, just, just like in the real world. Right. Everything has gone up around us. So they are paying more and their costs are more. Um, the minimum wage has gone up. Right. So more money is going to administrative costs. So less money is going into the after school programs. So did Prop 49 not index? Correct. Okay, Correct. so what does your bill do? It would add an ongoing $99 million each year. A, a, a way to index, yes, I guess. Yes, exactly. So this is also a budget item. Yes. Is the, does the same philosophy hold? We put this out yes. as a standalone bill and Get then... Get people to rally around it. And then and maybe look on the budget. Is. Yes, absolutely. What about, though, the local control funding formula? Mm -hmm. Because there is more discretion now mm -hmm. with regard to how local districts spend money. Yes. And so should local schools be dealing with this, local districts, and not... Seeking more from Sacramento? Candidly, LCFF is good in many ways, and districts can decide what they're going to do with it. Unfortunately, in my experience, what I've seen is after school programs, there's still not enough money to go around. That's the problem. So, after school programs kind of get pushed to the bottom, and if we don't make it a priority here in Sacramento, we're just putting one more burden on our school districts. So, it's our job to help them. No, I got it. I, I want to get a <clears throat> sense about who can be on school campuses. Mm. Uh, I, I'm speechless, I guess, <laughs> because you taught me, you've informed me that um, there's no rule against registered sex offenders being on school campuses. That is correct. Uh, this I is don't know, a... what happened to Jessica's <laughs> Law or whatever it is. Or... There's a little loophole. Okay, tell us about this little loophole. Uh, and it was brought to me by a group mm. of uh, parents in Fontana, so okay. it's a district bill right. that affects the entire state. All that is required now is for a school district or a school to send home with your child something saying there's going to be a registered sex offender on campus. Which is um, unnerving. I can only imagine is, getting that notice. Is, well, but yeah. what I think about is when my children were little, we'd get yeah. this giant packet right, exactly, every week right. of a thousand things, and right. you kind of go yeah. like this. Next. And next. Yeah. And so I might not even be aware as a parent mm. that this was going to happen, and would I want my child there? And so this would make sure that no registered sex offenders will be on campus with you have friends in the Republican side looking at this? Because I remember the late Senator Sharon Runner was very involved in this. She's yes. no longer with us. But I'm wondering if it... Uh, have not heard from okay. any of them, but would love to have their support. Right. Because in a lot of ways, you know, in this new environment, mm -hmm. even though Democrats have supermajority status, to try to get some bipartisan bills through, yes. presumably it's good for everyone. Brad, we should always all be working together. Right. At the end of the day, I think Democrats and Republicans, most of the time, want the same thing. Our biggest challenge is how do we get there? Right. We usually have different ways of getting there. So I would love for this to be a bipartisan bill. Her name is Connie Leva. She's a member of the California State Senate representing significant portions of the beautiful Inland Empire. I'm Brad Pomeroy in Sacramento, local edition.